replacing the IPR screen on my IPR valve on my truck and this is the socket I'll be using and this is the screen kit it's a international part number I'll also be making a test tool with this fitting here but I'm not doing a test I'm just making a tool so I'm going to show how you make a tool to test your high pressure oil system for leaks I already have my degas bottle and Ficum out of the way because I just did injectors and replaced the cups and seals on the oil rail. You can see the IPR is back there below the Y pipe or up pipe. So that's what I'm gonna be removing. It should be pretty easy to access once you have the Ficum and the degas bottle out of the way. This is what I used the socket, a swivel, a six inch extension, and a regular ratchet. I was gonna use a pipe, but my pipe wouldn't fit the handle, but I was able to break it loose. Now I'm just gonna unscrew it out and pull it out of there. Once I broke it loose, I just had to unscrew it out by hand. And mine already has the updated screen on it. I only removed it so I can make a video for the, how to make the tester, pretty much. I'm gonna pull out my green seal. My black seal. And the bottom seal. And once you got those out, now you can just pop your tip off, which might give it some trouble. Use a flat blade pop off. Let me go get one. I'm gonna pop the tip off with a flat blade. There you go. I just put the screwdriver in and twist it like that and it popped out. I'm just going to push down with an Allen wrench. Make sure your valve is working. Mine is fine. You can clean this up before you put all your new stuff on it. Okay, I got some fresh T6 right there. And the valve is cleaned up. You clean it up with some carburetor cleaner if you want. I'm just going to oil my new seal, my big seal. And put that one on first. I don't want to roll the seal, so what I'm going to do is grab it with my pick and pull it. And stretch it over. I don't roll it. Roll the seal. Until I get it on there. Your bottom seal is installed. Next up is your black seal. Put some oil on it. And that one goes on pretty easy. Carefully put it on so you can roll it. And the last seal is the greenish colored one. Now that all the seals are on, it's time to put the new screen on. 
just blowing out my old screen because then we'll put this away and keep it as a spare. I'm just gonna slip it on there. It should snap in place with a decent amount of force. Push from the edges and snap it. There you go. You should hear it snap on. That's it, this is ready to go back on the truck now. For this, if you could even get a torque wrench in there, is 19 to 21 foot pounds. I cleaned the threads off, but I'm gonna put oil back on the bottom seal here. And this will be ready to be reinstalled. So I'm gonna show how to make an IPR tester on a budget if you wanna test your oil pressure system. See if there's any leaks in your oil rail or anything. Mine I already knew it was leaking, so that's why I didn't test it. I just am doing everything. But if you wanna test it, if you wanna do the test before you even taking your truck apart, I'll show you how to make a tester cheap. This is a, uh, I got this whip hose from Harbor Freight. It was like $5.99. And this actually has a swivel fitting. And it's a quarter inch by five foot. Hose. I was gonna get a regular hose, but this swivel fitting is actually pretty nice, especially for in the back there in the engine. And for the tester, this is just a $10 cheap tester tool that screws into your IPR port. And with this tester, you don't need to command your computer or anything, you don't need anything to test your system. Is, so you, unlike if you were to test it through the ICP port, you need a program. But if you're testing it through the IPR port, then you don't need anything. You can just use this. So this works with standard quarter inch, so that's why I got this. So you screw this on there. You'd obviously put Teflon paste or Teflon tape or something there to seal it, thread seal it. This would screw on to where your IPR valve came out of. Put a little oil on these seals to make sure it seals good. And this end here, you screw a ball valve on there. It's a male quarter inch on this side, female on this side. It's all quarter inch standard. Screw that on there and then you screw your, your quarter inch compressor fitting there. And this is for whatever fitting your compressor uses. Now you just connect to your air compressor. And it would have, your air compressor usually has like 120 to 150 PSI or something in it. And then the air would go in and pressurize the system. So you'd have it closed, connect your compressor, then pressurize the system. And now you would look for leaks. If you want to go a step further, which is what I'm doing, you would, for my setup, I want to gauge on it. So I got a regular quarter inch NPTT, three female sides. I got a coupler, quarter inch coupler. Screw that onto my hose. Then your compressor fitting or your ball valve would screw into this side. And then your compressor fitting would screw on here. And now all you do is grab your gauge, standard MPT gauge. You get these from Harbor Freight anywhere. I went with this kind. This is a cheap gauge, a couple it was like five, six dollars. But have it closed, connect the compressor, open it up, pressurize your system. It would say like 120 psi for me or 130 for me and then I would close the valve and I could disconnect my compressor hose and it should hold pressure I'd be able to see if it's losing pressure the connections here should be leak free and all and uh, the system should stay pressurized you shouldn't lose uh, pressure so if you have the gauge set up you'd be able to know if your oil pressure system is holding good pressure so this is a setup I'd recommend going and buying a tea and um, 
all you need extra is a gauge a T and a coupler fitting and you'd be able to do this setup but the basic setup is all you need is a female to male ball valve but I'd recommend getting the T with the coupler and the gauge and this is a five foot hose but you can get a longer hose if you want it longer but for me five foot is more than enough and this setup here is pretty cheap the hose was $5.99 the fitting was about $10 or $11 the gauge was about five bucks T I already had it a couple I already had the fitting I already had but all these fittings, these fittings are all this is all cheap. Because I think one of these setups here would cost you, if you bought it already pre put together, it's like 115 to 120 bucks. And this setup will run you probably under $30. I'm just going to hand tighten this in there. Once it reaches a point that it's not easy to turn anymore, you just give it one one little quarter turn and it should be torqued. The IFK is reinstalled and it has a new screen on it now. And all I gotta do now is change out my up pipe, which is what I'm doing next. So I gotta spray my up pipe bolts down there and let them soak. Cause I'm gonna be doing that next. 